When I was writing my book, I had a chapter entitled Icons and Idols. And it was a chapter that was full of all the people that inspired me and lots of my personal real makeup icons. As the book progressed and the editing kind of kicked in, a decision was taken to drop that chapter and instead to put some of the people from that chapter sort of throughout the book rather than have them all bunched together and I renamed them Makeup Muses and had them kind of in between each chapter. There are some of the people though I kind of regretted having to drop some people out and also not you know not having as many in there although I do think it worked better for the flow of the book and I don't regret that but I thought I would do some videos entitled Icons and Idols and it would be some of the people that I'd researched a lot but didn't actually get to use. And I thought I would start today with one of my favourite icons from the 1970s. The one that I include in the book was Lauren Hutton. But this, there's obviously lots more that uh, lots of other people that I really would have liked to have included. Now, before I say who it is, I just want to say a huge thank you to anyone who's subscribed and everyone who has subscribed to my YouTube channel because I'm just hitting 1.5 million subscribers now, which is just so amazing. When I started this five years ago, I really thought I'd probably make about five videos, five or six videos. There was no master plan. It was very organic. And I now find myself with about 240 videos on my YouTube channel and they cover all kinds of subjects and topics and looks. And I'm really proud of my videos and I'm especially proud of my subscribers. I just love the interaction and the engagement that I get from all of you. And I feel like, you know, I hope that I've taught you things and I've passed my knowledge on but I also want to say that I've learned so much from my subscribers and um, I want to say a huge thank you and if you haven't subscribed please do because I'm not some weeks I'm not able to upload because I've obviously got a full-time job and um, so some weeks is good and some weeks I can't so so that you know exactly when I've posted a video do subscribe um, it means that you'll never miss them and um, I won't miss you so as you've probably noticed from the poster frame today I'm going to do as my idol and icon David Bowie and he's someone that has influenced me throughout my makeup career so much I can't even begin to list the the times I've used little bits of his makeup in my work or just been inspired by him. So I hope you enjoy it. As you've probably noticed, I haven't got any eyebrows all of a sudden. It's because I've bleached them and I've stuck them down with soap. So I do look like an alien, I know. But the look that I've chosen to do is from 1973. And this is the final Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars concert at the London Hammersmith Odeon. I've chosen this look because it's not the most iconic look of Ziggy Stardust, but it is a really Bowie-esque look and it's really indicative of the time. It's got lots of avant-garde fashion influences and um, his eyebrows are actually shaved, which I'm not prepared to do. So I've gone down the bleaching route. So it was makeup artist Pierre Laroche that did David's makeup for this concert. And you see David kind of before the makeup and he already has a bit of eye makeup on just because he kind of probably slept in it and wore it all the time. And the first thing you see um, Pierre do is a really intense red blush with a pigment all around the outside of this area. So it wasn't sculpty at all. Although Pierre Laroche did uh, David's makeup for this particular concert and did lots of the Ziggy Stardust looks and other looks with him, David often did his makeup himself and um, he loved makeup. And there's a really great interview in the same year in 1973 in Music Scene magazine where David talks about the kind of makeup shops he likes to go to and the makeup influences he has. He talks a lot about Japan because... Um, and Japanese products and it's because he famously after visiting Japan was very inspired by Japanese theatre, kabuki, no theatre and lots of the costumes that he wore even are very inspired by that, the kimonos and lots of Japanese influences. So you see that particularly around the, the blush which is obviously very kabuki-ish and very theatrical. He also talks about applying a sort of thin white base, either white, pinkish or yellowish, depending on how he's feeling. I'm going to use the Illamasqua one today and how he applied it with a damp sponge. So I'm just going to start to 
pat this on. I'm actually going to go over the red over the top to blend it in, which is very kind of um, authentic sort of Japanese theatre style. I think what's so nice about Bowie's makeup in this period and, and in general is that it is really visceral, it's really instinctive, it's it's perfect in its sort of imperfection. It's not like this kind of overly airbrush looking makeup that we're used to today and I really like that. I like that it looks very real and very kind of theatrical in a way. Another thing that um, he says in the interview in 1973 about his makeup is that he explains the kind of makeup shops he likes to go to and he mainly says that he, there's a makeup shop he loves in Rome and he goes there because they sell all of his favourite makeup. So they sell original coal from India and they sell his favourite brand of drugstore rice powder, face powder from um, Tokyo and they sell lots of great brushes and pigments and in this particular interview he won't say the name of that shop and he also talks about the makeup center in New York and how he likes it there for German pigments he talks about which I think would probably Kralin and he talks about that he buys a lot of Japanese tools and makeup brushes he loves Japanese makeup brushes don't we all um, so I'm just using this is not rice powder this is just a mac powder but i'm using a white powder just to set all of that liquid base so onto eyes i'm going to use black pigment on my eyes all over i looked in the um pierre laroche's makeup kit during that concert when you could see him doing his makeup in the documentary and i didn't actually recognize any of the brands in there which is weird because i know most of the brands but there were some red crayons and some pots of pigments with red lids, which I thought were going to be Bieber, but they weren't. So um, they're obviously a type of theatrical makeup or maybe a Japanese product. One of the most fun things about just before, when he's getting his makeup done, and Angie Bowie comes backstage, so Bowie's wife, and um, she has this amazing makeup on, red eye makeup, blue liner red lipstick and the makeup artist said oh I like your look Pierre Laroche says I love your look and they kind of start joking and kind of gently teasing her about her makeup and um, Bowie says to Pierre Laroche oh do you like the way she's lined her lips you know the liner and he was like well I don't really like that I don't like the way she does that and then Bowie says but the blue eyeliner with the red eyeshadow looks really good and they're kind of like joking and kind of um, and then he says, well, anyway, what do you know about makeup? You're just a girl, which I think is brilliant. It just shows you how, you know, what makeup was at the time, that it was very much about, you know, it was a very, very unisex kind of, particularly in, in, in his world. So just blended that in with a little bit of black powder, eyeshadow powder, and I'm going to use the same cream underneath. So now I'm going to use some silver pigment mixed with water, and you can see very clearly when his eyes are closed that he has this silver bit in the middle. And he said in the interview in 1973 that he didn't particularly like glitter on stage because it sometimes would drop down and get into his eyes during the performance. So, sort of makes sense. And I'm just going to buff that in with a little bit of the black powder. So I'm going to go through my brows with a white iridescent powder because I noticed he was wearing this at the concert. And then lots of black mascara. Bowie once said that he actually preferred the little spit and brush, the old fashioned style, but in this case he's definitely having a wand style mascara applied. So now I'm actually doing some sculpting, which he did not do. I've watched the makeup, I've looked at it, there was no sculpting, simply because he was very gaunt anyway, so I'm just trying to make myself look a bit more like him and I'm not as gaunt as him. I think a really good story that I heard, which um, kind of emphasizes how thin he must have been at that time, is that um, my husband did a Vogue cover of Kate Moss's kind of David Bowie. And he put, um, it wasn't makeup, he did it graphically, put the kind of um, 
you know, the lightning bolt over the eye. And inside the issue, they did a shoot with Kate with his original clothes and some of the outfits from the Ziggy Stardust period. And that the clothes were too small for Kate Moss. So, I mean, Kate Moss is tiny, so you can imagine how thin he must have been in that case. So I am just cheating that by sculpting. I'm just going to patch up a little bit of the pink blush because the um, contour is really not authentic so I'm just going to buff it in a little bit with pink, so just a powder. And he has so many costume changes in this um, particular concert and you do see the makeup's getting touched up so at one point it looks like there's more blush on and a bit more kind of lipstick. And for the lipstick it's a kind of pinky, frosty pink. And I've read that Bowie often liked to do his lip shape himself. He always liked to do that even if he had a makeup artist doing his makeup, which is just so nice to read because often when you're doing somebody's makeup that you've done before, if they, you know, they know their own faces, lots of big actresses and there's certain things that they like to do themselves, you know. For example, whenever I do Kate Winsett's makeup, she always likes to do her lower lip herself, like particularly the inner corner. She likes a particular shape. She knows exactly how she likes it to look. I mean, I've seen her do it hundreds of times and I could do it now in my sleep. I always hand her the pencil and I always hand her the concealer and say, go on, you do your, now you do your lip. And um, it's like a code between us. Uh, I just like things like that because I think, you know, everyone's got their little ways that they like things. And, um, you know, it's obviously the same with him. So I'm kind of ready. I just need to get my hair done. <laughs> 